Good morning, everybody. Here we are. It is Saturday morning. We're going to start working on mixing Francine's song today, which is awesome because mixing is a lot of fun. And um, if you're into sound stuff, you might be able to pick up some techniques or tools or something from this particular section because uh, we're going to do some, some cool stuff. I couldn't wait for you guys this morning. I already started smoking. So I'm going to roll that dope intro and uh, you guys can catch up. How's that sound? Let's do that. Looks like you're not hearing this. There we go. Starts beating out and I hear you good. I'm not sure about this, but I think we should. Oh yeah, I think we should. It's too new to know better. I'm too bold to care. Just hold me, make the world disappear. Mm, make the world disappear. And I'm all like, baby this, baby that Playing with my booty cats, can't you see? You're the only one for me, say you're mine And I'm all like, baby this, baby that Got me like an acrobat in the bed Holding me up until the end, say you're mine It feels like a first Never ended, butterflies inside. Feelings extended. This big, so you can read it. I love this high. He drives me wild with all the things he can do. He's got me begging for more. Now I'm just craving him. It's true. Oh, let's see this through. And I'm all like, baby, this, baby, that. Playing with my bloody cat. Can't you see? You're the only one for me. Say all night. And I'm all like, baby, this, baby, that. Got me like an acrobat in the bed. Holding me up until the end. Say all night. Say all night. 
move some plants in the wind get soaked Honestly, I was stoked I love me a summer storm So I was like, bring it on Oh my god, that lightning crack Seemed like it bounced right off my back Never have I ever felt so alive And now I'm all like, baby this, baby that Playing with my booty cats, can't you see? You're the only one for me Stay all night And I'm all like, baby this, baby that Got me like an acrobat in the bed Holding me up until the end Stay all night Stay all night Stay all night Stay all night It sounds pretty good. Here are some of the notes that I took from that listen through. The bass is pretty unruly, so it sounds um, not what she was playing, but the actual tone of the sound. The frequencies in the bass sound are kind of all over the place. It sounds less focused and less um, hard hitting and punchy than I want it to. So we're going to focus a little bit on the bass. The harmonies are too loud, but we knew that when we recorded them. So we're going to tuck those harmonies down and kind of make them um, make them a a more ambient part of the final production, I think. I wrote, revisit the motif in the first verse. Last week we turned it off because I thought maybe it was playing too much through the song, but now I kind of miss it. So I'm just going to take another listen at that and see if maybe that could go back in or some version of it. Then um, make the strings more prominent. The strings are in there. They sounded pretty good. Uh... I remember at the end of last week, it sounded like there was a bad note in the strings, and I had fixed it, and it didn't go away, but I did not hear that through this whole song that we just listened to. So maybe that was a, maybe that was a DAW glitch. Hope it was. Um, all right, see this through should be stronger. That's kind of a, a, a pivotal point in the song when she says, Let's see this through. That should be really be a strong part of the song so we were going to try to emphasize that and make that stand out more so than other bits of the song pitch correct the harmonies because they got pitchy in some spots but that's no big deal maybe bring the strings back in the interlude we turned those off because um they didn't sound great but again i miss them a little bit so let's just check that and make sure that was a good decision the drums get lost in the end chorus because the whole song kind of ramps up, but the drums stay the same volume throughout, so we have to address that. And uh, clean up the ending, so the very last note, we just got to fade that out so it sounds natural right now. It kind of... Maybe we take care of that right now because we're thinking about it, so I could. it might just be putting a fade on these... And ending it right there, I guess, where it was ending, but fading out. Maybe fade out the bass a little sooner. Let's see what that sounds like. Too long. These need to fade out sooner. Maybe here. Let's try that. That sounds pretty natural to me, so cool. Let's just cross that one off. So, boom. We're already making progress. That's how we roll here. All right, let's fire this up, and let's take a listen to... I want to get the bass down. The bass and the drums uh, sort of drive the song, so they need to interact very well together. Um, but I want to work right now on just the sound of the bass itself and see what we can do to make the bass sound... Uh, as good as it can, and then we'll make it work as well as it can with the drums. So let's let's uh, get critical on the bass here for a bit. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a compressor, 
And if, uh, if you're not familiar with a compressor or how a compressor works, there's a whole workshop on that. If you look back through this playlist on YouTube, there's one on just compressors and everything about them. Um, so I'm going to grab a, a very basic compressor here. I've got the Waves. This is a classic Waves R comp. Uh, up, 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 up. I'm just looking for it. It is here. And the bass is a mono source, so I'm going to grab the mono version and let's just grab this, pull it right onto the track. So now we have a compressor here. I know it's small. I hope you can see it all right. And let's just listen to what that sounds like. Right now it's set to, uh, set to not do anything. Now what I want to do first with the compressor, I'm going to use more than one on the bass. And I, this is a technique I learned from Michael White's um, classes. Michael White was a producer um, and sound engineer for Whitney Houston and a lot of other notable, you know, big selling artists. So I followed his course where, and he, he, I don't know if he came up with this technique, but it's where I learned it. He takes the compressor and he uses it to compress the whole signal evenly. And by doing that, it's imagine, let's grab, uh, let's grab Photoshop for a second. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but just to give you a general idea of why I'm doing this. Let's just make a quick new document here. That's fine, 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 fine. Grab a brush, and I'll grab my little pen here, and let's make this a nice soft brush. And I'll make it white. Right now, this is kind of like what the bass sounds like to me. See how it's it's got most of its energy in the center, but it, it kind of goes out into the rest of the sonic area, right? It starts to fill the room with bass, which is great when you've got, you know, f a four-piece rock band. That's exactly what you want it to do in a four-piece rock band. But once it's a production and you've got strings and weird synthesizers and guitars and multiple vocals and all that, there's not enough space to contain all of that. So what I, I want to do to the bass is take this kind of uh, airy or poofy sound and focus it in. So let's get rid of that. And now I'll make my brush here in Photoshop harder like this, right? That's what we want the bass to sound like. Solid, center, and driving, not kind of amorphous and, and moving around. So that we're going to use the compressor to do this in stages. And the first stage is going to be to compress the whole thing by an even amount, but just a little bit. And let's see what that does to the sound. So uh, let me fire up our compressor here. And the idea is to use a very small ratio. So we don't want it to compress a lot, like 1.1 maybe, which is really, really small. We're not doing a lot of compression. The thing is, we're going to put our threshold very low so that the compressor is activated at a very low level, right? So it's going to do this little bit of compression to the entire signal. It's never going to pump. It's never going to breathe. It's always going to be there, a constant state of just whoop, crashing your head. That's kind of what we're doing with this right now. And we want the attack to be fast and the release to be pretty long. And let's see how this sounds. Oh, I got my pen on my pad there. It's making my mouse go crazy. Here we go. So we haven't brought the threshold down yet. It's not doing any compression. I'm going to pull the threshold down. And now we're getting some compression. So what I want to do and what he recommended or I learned from him was to compress this by about 3 dB. See the marking here is 3 decibels. It doesn't matter what compressor you use, but, um, but about 3 decibels here we want to be compressing by consistently on every note. I want this release to be longer. There we go. Now let's... Since we're compressing the signal by 3 decibels, now I'm going to use the gain over here to turn the whole signal up by 3 decibels. So what we're effectively 
effectively getting is just a, a little crush on the signal, a little bit of a squeeze um, to, to make it a little bit more solid and focused. Now, right now we have the compression on, and I'm going to toggle it on and off so you can maybe hear the difference. Off. Well, let's let me get to uh, let's get to a chorus where the bass is kind of active, you know, and I'll just loop it so we're hearing the same thing. Let's compare apples to apples, you know. So right now it's off. On. Off. On. So hopefully you can hear what that's doing. If you can't, let's just pop back into Photoshop and I'll, I'll just show it one more time. So with the compressor off just the way that we recorded it because I didn't compress the bass while she was recording intentionally. I, I left it as clean as I could so we would have more options to do now. So just off the line, the way that the bass sounds is kind of soft. Um, it's kind of woofy, right? See, it's kind of blurry a little bit. And now when we apply this little bit of what he would call, I think he calls it uh, functional compression? I don't know. He has a name for it. <coughs> um, then it becomes a much harder, more focused sound. right? So let me just make my brush hard like this. And that's what we're going for. We want it to be clear, precise, and even throughout the song because it is the bed of the song along with the drums. Cool. So that's the first step in processing the bass sound. <coughs> Great. Now let's hear what that sounds like in the mix. In the by by in the mix, I mean with all the other instruments playing. Let's make sure that this still sounds good to us. I'll do it in that same chorus. This baby that playing with my booty cats, can't you see? You're the only one for Okay, it's not making a huge difference, but it does make a difference. I see we have an equalizer on here already for some reason. I'm just going to get rid of this. I don't know why it's there. Maybe we were solving a problem, but I'll get back to that. This baby that playing with my booty cats, can't you see? You're the only one for me, say you're mine. Off. And I'm all like, baby, this baby that got me like an acrobat on. in the bed. Oh, let me see, it's not really getting louder. It sounds, it sounds like it's getting louder. It's just getting tighter and that makes it sound a little bit more prominent. It brings it forward in the mix. It makes it more centered and solid, which is what we're going for with the bass. Now, we're gonna add another level of compression to the bass because as she's playing the bass, you'll notice some of the notes are louder than others. And we want that in a live performance, but at some point, it, it with all the other instruments playing, um, some of those quieter notes get lost and the bass can disappear for a while. So we're going to try and even that out a little bit. So you can see all these spikes here. It's okay. We don't want this to be completely flat, but there's a good bit of dynamic range here. And by di dynamic range, I mean the difference between the quiet bits and the loud bits. And we can even this out a little bit. And doing that will help us kind of rein in the bass and allow it to... Um, leave space for the other instruments and still be heard and strong. So let's add another compressor on here. I'll use the same one just to keep it simple, because it doesn't have to. Be, you don't have to use the fancy stuff. Any compressor will really do. You could use the stock ones built in, but this is a pretty standard compressor that m many people are familiar with. So that's why I'm using it. 
So with this level of compression, I'm, I'm trying to uh, hit some of these spikes, some of the places the bass pokes out, so that I can bring the whole level of the bass up a little bit and have the quieter bits a little louder. So for this, we want a different technique. We want the ratio to be a bit larger. Remember, for that first bit of compression, we used a really, really tiny 1.1 ratio, which is about as small as you can get, and we compressed everything. For this, we only want to compress we only want to compress uh, the loudest bits, and we want to compress them by quite a bit. So, uh, I lost the compressor there, sorry. Dun, 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 this one. So, we're going to set our threshold to, you know, somewhere where these pokes start to engage. And our ratio, I think maybe we'll start with like a 4 to 1 ratio. So, what that means is for every 4 decibels above the threshold, the compressor will only allow one decibel through. So a compressor in this sort of configuration doesn't actually, it's, it doesn't brick wall the sound. It just, um, it dampens the sound. It makes it more difficult for sound to cross a threshold. It doesn't stop it entirely. That would sound weird. So uh, that's if you want to learn more about compressors, check out the whole compressor tutorial. There's slides and pictures and history and all that jazz. Can't you see? You're the only one for me. See your mind. And I'm all like, baby, this, baby, that. Got me like an acrobat in the bed. Holding me up until the... I'm going to accentuate this compressor compressor so I can hear what it's doing and then when we can hear it active I'm gonna adjust the attack and release time so that it kind of the compressor compresses to the beat of the song right I don't want to compress to a different um, uh, meter you know I want it to pump I want it to compress musically so let's accentuate this a lot and let's just solo the bass See if I increase the release, it evens the sound out. If I pull it back, it kind of adds a punchiness. The compressor is helping to punch each of these notes, which is kind of what we want, I think. I think I would rather have this punchiness to the bass than this smoothness to the bass. In this song, it's a pop song, so we want it to be driving, we want it to people to be able to dance to it, so we don't want to smooth it out too much. We can use the release here. To actually help us. Um, this is too much. I hear it at points. Like there. I don't like that so much, I don't think. Maybe less release. I think that's helpful. Maybe a... These uh, things that I'm controlling here, this one up in the left, this is uh, arc. I think this is to, um, it tries to make up your gain. If you set this to manual, it won't do that. I believe that's what arc does on this compressor. And smooth and warm changes the tonal characteristics of the compressor from like a, an optical based one to a, a FET based one or something like that. Uh, oh, no, that's this one. So these are character things. Tubes, turn tubes on or turn, turn tubes off or, you know. We're modeling different hardware characteristics of a compressor with these buttons. So I'm just messing with them to see which one fits us best. I 
like warm better. I honestly can't hear a difference here between opto and electro. This is also compressing more than I want it to, so I'm raising the threshold. I think that sounds pretty good. Now you can see we're compressing by about three decibels. We can raise our gain by about that too. Now let's hear what the bass sounds like in the mix. With my bloody cats, can't you see? You're the only one for me. See? Without our compressors. So, I'm not sure if you are hearing this, but what I'm hearing the compressor do now is the longer notes where she holds them out. I'm hearing more of that note. The tail of the longer notes isn't getting drowned by the rest of the music as much. Let's listen to the bass with just the drums for a while. So I'm going to turn on the bass here and, and then also the drums. And I'll start it from the beginning. No compressors here. Off. On. So what I hear is um, uh, a bit more focused, punchy bass. That's what we were going for. Now, there's also some other things with the uh, with the with just the frequency response of this that I want to change. Now, I have an EQ on here before the compressors, rolling off the very low end of the bass just by default, right? Now, let me get rid of this. So now we have no EQ on this bass at all. All right, I like it, but we don't need the bass down at like 20 hertz, so I'm going to roll that off, or maybe even 40. Nobody's going to be hearing that. And let's take a look at our drums and see where that kick drum lives. It's probably right about here at like 50 or 60. That's usually where the kick drum is. That's our bass. Let's go over to our kick. Mm -mm -mm. Here's the kick, right? I can't see it. There's a little window in my way. All right, I'm going to take a look at this. So here's some EQ that we had put on the kick already. Let's get rid of that. So here you see the kick lives kind of primarily at 40, 50, 60 here. And the bass lives a little bit higher here at, you know, 70, 80. So what I want to do is take a little dip out of the kick around there. So maybe here, and let's make sure that doesn't sound too weird. And I might add touch at like 50 just to compensate or 60 yeah and then also at like 120 just a little bit so I've made a little curve there is all I dipped out where the bait we want the base to fit and then I accentuated right around that dip and then uh, let's go back to our base here you might not hear these super low frequencies. I hear them here because I have a subwoofer. So I have a big speaker that can make these frequencies on your laptop or on your earbuds or whatever. You're probably not going to hear these frequencies at all. So don't, um, don't think you're crazy if you don't. You, you have to have a pretty um, big 
speaker to replicate these frequencies down this low. Uh, all right, so we were going back to the bass now. Ba Bam. And let's give ourselves some space for the kick here. So it's, it cleans it up for us. And I can see this noise over here. I'm just going to roll a little of that noise off because I think if I roll too much of it, we lose some of the tone from the bass. I think there's tone in that noise. <laughs> um, so I think this is a good compromise. And uh, let's keep listening. There we go, right around 800. Add some, a little bit of clarity to this bass, I think. And then I might suck out a little bit of where I know the guitars are gonna be. Around 200. Let's give this guy his boost at like 80. Off. On. See, I'm not trying to do anything drastic. I know this might look a little bit funky, but these are relatively small cuts with the exception of this one at 60 hertz where the kick drum lives. Everywhere else, this is like a decibel, two and a half decibels. They're not huge, one decibel, and then I roll this off. So I'm not making gigantic movements on the bass. I'm just trying to clean it up and leave room for the other instruments. And also, and also give it a little bit of space to shine. So let's hear that back in the mix. This kick is too woofy for me. I'm hearing this in the mix and I'm kind of, my brain is blaming the bass, but it's coming from this kick. So let's tame this down. Maybe we can just grab like a low shelf filter here. So if I change the shape here, whoops-a-daisy, change the shape to a low shelf, now I can grab all the low frequencies before this point and pull them down together. I'm still hearing woof. I think that's better. Let's bring the bass back in. Let's bring the drums up. Hear the whole mix. Got me like an acrobat in the bed. Holding me up, I'm still the end. Say you're mine. This baby that playing with my booty cats, can't you see? You're the only one. Baby, that playing with my booty cats can 
I'm just doing a little uh, a little bit of mixing here on the drums. Just their levels, uh, each of them together. Let's listen to just the drums for a second. It's pretty good. It's pretty all right. See how that sounds with the bass. Waiting for the snare to kick in. I want to hear the crack. Make sure that's okay. Overheads might be a bit loud now. All right, let's hear the whole song. something in the bass I don't like a frequency I'm looking for it right now hey was that noise down there is this bit I think this woofiness this still gives us 80 maybe I'll make that a, lot, a little bit less steep I think there's still something out. Is it this? Yep. It's 135. I don't like this in the in the bass. So I'm pulling a little of that out. You see, you're the only one for me. Say you're mine, and I'm all like, baby, this, baby, that got me like an acrobat in the bed. Holding me up until the end. Say you're mine, this, baby, that playing with my booty cats. Can't you see? You're the only one. That's before any processing. You're the only one for on. me. Say you're mine. And I'm all like, baby, this baby that got me like an acrobat in the bed. That's pretty good. Now, I want to just add a little bit of some, some uh, analog, a little bit more analog feel to it with, with like a saturation to help it cut through the mix without adding any more to the low end information. I want to give it kind of an edge. So there's a few ways we could do that. We could run it through an amp and try to get, you know, the amp sound and 
record that with a microphone or we could uh, add a tape to it we could try that or we could run it through some kind of valves or you know tubes but I think we're gonna try normally I would try a tape plug-in but I think it might slow down my computer so I'm not gonna use that I'm gonna use the simple saturation plug-in from Softube. It's just a one knob saturator. Um, well, I have Softube tape too. Let's try the Softube tape because I think that might work best. So I'm going to grab this tape plug-in and let's pull it over to the base. So this is going to simulate as if we had taken this signal and run it out through a tape machine. And that adds a character to the sound and we have some control over it in software that maybe we didn't have back in the day. So this is what an old tape machine may have looked like, a software uh, representation of it. My body cats, can't you see? You're the only one for me. Say your mind. very subtle, even when I have it cranked like this. <laughs> That's kind of neat. trying different tape speeds to see how that impacts the sound. Studio seems like where I want it to be. So now one thing I'm going to do, since I just remembered to do it, since we're not recording anything right now, I'm going to change my sample rate here from 256 to something higher, just to give my uh, my computer a little bit more room to to work with, and hopefully we don't get like buffering issues and stuff. So let's just give that a fire up. All right. <coughs> Starts beasting out and I hear you good I'm not sure about this, but I think we should Oh yeah, I think we should It's too new to know better, I'm too bold to care Just hold me, make the world disappear mm, Make the world disappear I'm not hearing enough difference from the tape to justify leaving it on there, so I'm not gonna. Now, instead, I'm gonna try the other saturation knob and see if we get a better result from that. Here, if you crank it, it starts to distort. Listen to just the bass and the guitar. I mean the bass and the uh, drums. 
Master fader turned up. Let's turn that down. Gonna bring in the acoustic. Is, is the acoustic guitar out of tune? It sounds like it is. So we can see that there was a heavy roll off on this mic here. When we recorded it, we didn't record anything down under this level, so we can cut that right off. I'm gonna I'm gonna try uh, I'm gonna try using a compressor here to um, kind of even out and maybe shine up. I think in this instance, using a, a bright compressor, just even if we don't compress anything, just running this through that might um, improve the sound of that guitar. So let's give that a shot. I heard a comment. Let me just check and make sure everything's groovy. We don't want to go too far without everything being groovy. You know how I feel about that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And the comments are here. Oh, there's Lisa. Here she is. Hi, Lisa. Good morning. Thanks for joining us today. We're mixing. And uh, it's going well. Right now, we're working on the acoustic guitar. Bring in the drums. Let's listen to a different part of the song. Just make sure we're not too um, too focused on one piece of the song. Let's make sure it sounds good everywhere. going on here? I can't even engage this compressor. This plugin actually doesn't seem to be working as far as I can tell. The gain control works. Interesting. Alright, I guess we're not going to use that. use that though uh, that's the DVX 160 let's try this version it's not stereo it's mono let's grab this version 
Looks like I have a couple different copies of this plugin installed. There we go, this one's working. Grab a louder portion. Yeah, I think I like it's doing almost nothing, but I think I just like the sound of that compressor on the acoustic guitar. I think it helps bring out some of the shininess. Uh, again, another piece of gear that I think might help the acoustic guitar is maybe some of this API gear to make it a little bit brighter. So let's take a look at the API 550. Is this what I want? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yes, it is. So this is just an equalizer like you would see on a mixing desk. There's just high, medium, and low, or high or low, mids, and highs. Um, so there's not a ton of controls on here, but again, just this piece of modeling adds something to the sound that wouldn't, um, you can't really get any other way. So now on its own, this guitar would sound brittle. It doesn't have much low end at all. But once we add it to the rest of the mix, that's okay because all the other instruments fill in that space. And you, your ear to, isn't like, oh, I, that guitar sounds brittle. Your ear is like, wow, I can hear everything clearly because it's we're, we're sharing the space effectively. There's only so much space and we've got a lot of instruments we're trying to fit into it so they can't all have all the frequencies. Hmm... Let's listen to the song a little bit. We don't have to listen to the whole thing. All right, so first off, these first three notes are just loud. So I'm going to cut this here and just turn these notes down. So that's a very easy way to handle that. Them out and I hear you good. I'm not sure about this, but I think we should. Oh, yeah, I think we should. It's too new to know better. Just out of curiosity, I don't know if this is gonna help or hurt, but I'm gonna try and take this bass. I just want to bounce it all so it's one track now. And I'm gonna um, I'm gonna hit this with Melodyne. Melodyne is gonna analyze the track, and it's gonna break it all out as if it were kind of like MIDI. So it'll be oh, it's gonna tell me to buy something. Cause of course it is. Actually, that said free. I like free better. But you can see what happened here is it took the bass line and it broke it into notes on this piano roll. 
and we can uh, we can examine them and if we need to we can make adjustments so these are pretty dead on actually <laughs> So I'm going to use Melodyne a little bit here to just try and see if I can tighten up both the pitch and the, the drift of the pitch. So the drift is this little uh, line here. You can see the, the waviness between note to note. Let me see if I can pull some of that in a little bit. I don't want to, I don't want to butcher Jody's performance. I'm just trying to tighten up the sound of the bass itself because it's not perfectly in tune and it's a little bit off. So is the guitar, to be fair. But it's this is since the bass is only generally playing one note at a time, it's easier to correct than the guitar that's playing six notes at a time. I think it just cleans it up a little bit. So let's roll with that for a bit. And I don't think we can do that to the guitar as well as effectively. We can try. I wish we could because it does sound kind of wobbly and out of tune to me. And also, what is going on here with this cut here? I didn't do that. I don't recall this at all. Maybe I did. Sounds fine, so let's leave it. So let's take this guitar and bounce it so it's one track. And then let's see what Melodyne will do for us here. See, it's doing polyphonic detection because it knows that this is a guitar and not a single note instrument. So it can, it says that it can detect the notes inside the chords, which is crazy. And then it gives you the ability to change them, which is crazy. So here's what our guitar performance looks like. And let's give this a little listen. Let me solo this. Oh, it's starting to sound weird. It's starting to sound weird and wobbly as I mess with this. So I'm not going to do anything to the acoustic guitar because I, it starts to sound unnatural when I do. But it's interesting to, n to see how well this can split apart all the different sounds. And if you accidentally hit a wrong chord, you can just come in here and fix the chord. And that's it blows my mind. All right. So we're not melodyning this. We don't need to. Well, I wish we could, but it doesn't work well, so we're not going to. And I think I can remove melodyne now somewhere. Remove melody. All right. And then let's clean that up. And it's 11 o'clock. I think we're going to take a break because I have to take a piss. And when we come back, we'll continue on and make this song shine up like a crazy diamond. Because that's how we roll on Saturday mornings. Oh, the break thing didn't work again. God damn it. Boo. Boo.
a song. Yeah, that's one verse.
And we're back. Here we are. Uh, that was a fun break. I uh, was able to urinate. It was great. So, moving on. Sounds pretty good to me. still hear some wobbliness in the bass. At least I think it's the bass. It might be the guitar. Wobbliness is in the guitar. I might have to re-record that guitar because it's pissing me off that the, it's out of tune enough to bother me. fix this now because uh, it's going to make the song not as good as it could be So uh, and it won't take long so let me just set up a mic and I will make sure that the guitar is tuned better this time Mike's name is way taller than I remember it being. I thought this was a little shorty, but it appears to not be. That was bothering me the whole time. I knew it was out of tune the whole time we've been doing this, but I suspected it was part of the uh, low end of the bass that was that wobbly sound. I didn't want to believe it was the guitar because I was being lazy. But I should have known it wasn't Jody. She's nasty.
I think that's better. So here we go. Turning off the sound here. Let me uh, turn on the mic. Chicka chicka. Let's make sure we got a track for it. And I'm going to turn off this little fan. Let me fix that buffer setting too, because that's going to get me. Remember I changed it a little bit earlier? Let's put this back to like something smaller. I need the click track on so I can get into the click.
Fuck. <laughs> My phone is ringing. God damn it. That was a good take, too, and my phone was ringing. I gotta do it again. God damn it. Turning that off. I didn't hear the bass in that. I had it muted for some reason. I don't understand right then, but <clears throat> let's turn that back on and do it one more, one more shot. Lisa says it's pretty when I play the acoustic. Thank you very much. 
Hopefully that was a good take. I think it was. I heard one flub note in the outro. Let's just listen there and make sure it's... I also have to reassess all the processing we did, so let's turn all the processing that we did on that guitar off, because now it's a different guitar, so the choices we made here no longer make sense. there. Oh, there it is. Ba-na-num. And then I missed the note. Right there. That's okay. Maybe I can just... Hold on one sec. It's this note, so I'm just going to steal it. And grab... This little section right there. Copy it. I think this will work. Or I think I can hold the Alt key, maybe, and drag. Yeah. Now I just lost. Uh, I lost the last one. Where does this go now? I'm just gonna drop this over here for a second. Uh, right there. So I'm gonna grab one of these and drag it right there. Oh, well, let me copy this and put it back then. I didn't realize I was moving it. I thought I was copying it. Hmm. Doesn't sound natural. Let's just adjust these fades a little. Fix it up. Just make them fade a little bit more into each other. I hear it though. And if I move them slightly. Yeah. This is too much of a fade, but I think it's working. No, maybe it's not enough of a fade. Just looking for the sweet spot. Move the whole thing. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah. hear it come back up. I don't want to hear it come back up, so maybe if we change that this way. Yep. That did it, I think. Cool. Alright, let's uh, bounce that to one track here. I think it's just Command P. Yep. Alright. Clean it up a little. We don't need this bit in the beginning where I was just making noise. Get rid of that. Make sure I started right on start. Didn't, so let's just uh, bend that. Let's detect our transients. And then grab our bendy tool. Let's just pull that right onto the beat. Same with the bass. Let's do that to the bass, too. Let's take the transients. Let's pull this right on. The first beat should be on the first beat. Let's take a look at our EQ again on this. Let's listen to just the guitar, bass, and drums.
still want to cut off this low end. I still hear some wobbliness in it that pisses me off. Maybe it's just my playing. <laughs> Oh, wait a second. Did this actually bend anything? No, it didn't bend anything. It just added the markers. That's okay. some kind of phasiness I'm hearing with the drums in maybe. No, oh, I heard it right then. Let's see if Melodyne can help this. It still sounds out of tune to me though. You saw me tune the guitar. Melodyne. I might just be obsessing over it, so I'm not going to spend too much time trying to make it sound perfect, but it's pissing me off. And uh, making it good is just a series of fixing all the little things that piss me off. I heard you. Doing our polyphonic detection here, which is just some crazy future processing. Boom. There's our guitar. It looks like everything's in center pitch here. There's not too... It doesn't look out of tune. Check the phase. I think we have a phase button on here now. Mm. Maybe it's just on the input. There's a tool called Mix Tool. It has it. First of all, I heard a click right here. What was that? Click. You hear it? Something's making a sound. Something that's playing. And all that's playing right now is the bass and the guitar. So it's going to be the bass. Really? I don't see it. Let's mute this and see if we still hear it. It's in the bass. It's this bend marker. Does something weird happen here? Huh. All right, well, let's get rid of those. So I can just hide those bend markers, see if that has any effect on this. I see this weird kind of blip in the waveform here. Maybe that's all it is. I didn't hear it before. Maybe it's not a problem when the drums are playing. Let's see if we can fix that. Let's just cut this out. And fade this. Let's see if that masks the issue. This fade is too dramatic, but um, let's make that a little 
that's crazy and make it logarithmic <laughs> I think that sounds all right. I'm gonna fade this one in a little bit so it doesn't make a pop either. I'd rather have that little um, smooth fade out than that pop noise. So just clean that up. All right, back to drums, bass, guitar. I flipped the phase. I think that sounds better on the on the acoustic guitar, but we didn't listen to much of it. This is actually compressing a lot, so uh, in those big bits, it's compressing a lot. So I'm going to turn it up to compensate it. All right, that sounds pretty good. I'm going to bring the strings in, and I'm going to bring the strings in because I know that they're. Um, they use a lot of energy in the frequency spectrum. There's some, there's a lot of information in the low end of the strings, and there's a lot of information in the high end of the strings. So um, we want the strings to act as a pad in the song and fill in all the spaces that the other instruments aren't filling when the other instruments aren't playing. <coughs> so uh, let's take a look and make sure that they're not um, eating the whole frequency spectrum. I suspect they, they are. They usually do. So let's clean up the strings. Bring them in. I need to play in the choruses. So let's make a little loop in the chorus. string information down where the bass and drums are here. And I'm going to cut a little hole here around 2K. Because I think that's where the vocals are going to fit. Just the main vocals, not the harmonies. Yet. Oh shit, now I don't know which one's our vocal track. I think it's this now. Or 
was I smart enough to move it up here? I might have been, because I call this old vocals. So, <laughs> ah, shit. Pay attention, Luke. I start spacing out and I hear you good. I'm not sure about this, but I think we should. Oh, yeah, this is our new vocal track, I think. I'm just going to mute that for a second and just check this one. I think this is the old one. I start spacing out and I hear you good. I'm not sure about this, but I think we should. As we all with all the things he can do. He's... It feels like our first day I'm too. Pretty sure this isn't our track. This is our track. So moving this one up. Come on. Up, 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 up. I'll drop it there for a second. And then we'll put it up here with the vocals. And we'll turn it gold like money. And then there's another track that went with it. This is the harmony. We'll bring that up there too. We can leave it purple. And we can leave it muted for now. Old folks, too. So I'm keeping these tracks, but we're not going to listen to them. I'm going to hide them, actually. Let's hide that. If they stay around, I can always get them back if I need to, but we don't need them causing confusion for myself. It's this one right here. This one. I'm leaving that. Okay, now with the vocal, I'm going to do the same thing that I did to the bass with the uh, with that very basic low-level compression. Uh, where is the R compressor? Well, it's the alphabetical order, Luke, so let's start with the R's. That's a good place to begin. And we'll grab the R compressor. Actually, before we compress it, let's just... Uh, throw an EQ on it and cut out the low end because Francine doesn't have much low end in her voice. Anything that's there in the mic is going to be just noise. So let's just cut I'm out the low end. See, all this is just noise. So we don't want that noise to trigger the compressor at all. That's why I turned it off before we put the compressor. So now we've cut out uh, the low end stuff that was, you know, the the uh, kick drum from her microphone coming into, uh, from her headphone coming into the microphone. We cut that out and now we're running into this compressor and we're going to do that same thing where we use a really low ratio and a really low threshold and we compress the whole kit and caboodle, as they say. Hold to care, just hold me. this so it's all one track and that way um, instead I don't want to turn it up too much from the slider I want to leave some room there I'd rather turn it up from the track itself or maybe not because she gets loud here I'm just gonna leave it alone for now and the butterflies inside. whoa no we missed something there No! All right. I guess this wasn't the right track. Let's get rid of it. Open up this and bring back our hidden tracks. Damn it. This must have been our vocal track. Starts 
spacing out and I hear you good I'm not sure about this, but I think we should Oh yeah, I think we should It's too new to know better, I'm too bold to care Just hold me, make the world disappear Okay, so let's do our compression on this. Damn it. It's important to stay organized. It's hard to fall off track. I mean, it's easy to fall off track. Let's rename this vocals now. Make sure this is going to the vocal bus. That's important. Okay. Cool. Very good. Very good. Now uh, I want to throw a deesser on her because um, some of her, her s -s 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 sounds are poking out to me. So I'm gonna grab a deesser. Single vocal, wide band. See, this plugin is showing me where the sibilance information is, where uh, her S sounds are. See, so, so you can see where the plugin is activated. It's um, it's turning just the frequencies down where her S's are only when they happen and leaving the rest of the signal untouched. And it's showing you they turn green, her S's, along the waveform here. So check that out. He drives me wild with all the things he can do. He's got me begging for more. Now I'm just craving him. It's true. It just, uh, it softens them a little bit. This is a little too much, but, um. I'll turn on oversampling here. And boom. All right, that's a little better. Now I wanna, what I want to do is put Francine in a space. So right now this is very dry recording. She was very close to the microphone, recording right into it, which sounds great and clean. Uh, now we have the opportunity to put her in whatever kind of space we want. And I really like the sound of halls. I like long reverbs that are um, controlled and kind of musical. So let's start. We have a reverb over here that I was just playing with earlier. This is just the Valhalla Room reverb, which is relatively inexpensive. I think it's 50 bucks, and uh, you can get great sound out of it right out of the gate. So I think this is its default right here. We have our mix here, which is saying I want this track over here to be only reverb. I don't want um, I don't want to put reverb on the top of another track. This is the reverb track, and I will send tracks into it, and then return just the reverb so so I have control so this is mixing it so that I can operate in that way if I were to take this reverb and put it on another track I could turn this down if I wanted to just apply a little bit of reverb to that one track 
thing is I don't want to do that. I want to apply this reverb to many tracks and I want the track the instruments that I feed to the to the reverb to interact together like a real room. So that's why we're doing it this way. We have a, a an effects bus here with the reverb on it and I'll send the tracks to that reverb that I want. It's a lot it's a relatively long reverb, 2 seconds. This is large room. Let's make it I mean a large room is a hall. All a hall is is a is a large room. So let's listen. Words. I start spacing out and I hear you good. I'm not sure about this, but I think we should. Oh yeah, I think we should. It's too new to know better. I'm too bold to care. Just hold me, make the world disappear. So I like it, but it's a little bright sounding. It sounds kind of like you're in a bathroom or something. I don't want that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use this high cut to to soften it. I start spacing out and I hear you good. I'm not sure about this, but I think we should. Oh yeah, I think we should. Okay, I like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the acoustic guitar to that reverb too so it sounds like her and the acoustic guitar are in the same room. Makes sense? So from here, this is why I have this whole separate section on all these tracks for sends. I want to send this track, the acoustic guitar track that we recorded, to the verb, to the reverb. So now that I can control how much of the track, like the volume that I send into it, and I can also control over here how much of the overall level of reverb you hear. So now I have control over how much reverb there is overall and how much each instrument is is contributing to it. So I like to start out by giving everything the same amount, whatever the default is, and then I adjust it um, as necessary over here in the reverb generally. Hold on. Bam. That's much too much, but you hear what it's doing, I hope. It's too new to know better. I'm too bold to care. Just hold me. Make the world disappear. Make the world disappear. And I'm all like, baby, this, baby, that. Playing with my body cats. Can't you see? All right, now I want to also add those strings into this reverb. So let's grab our strings over here, and oh, they're already going there. Look at that. That's what I was using it for already. And there's already, all right, cool. So they're already going to the reverb. Now I want to add some some more some more depth, some more interest to her vocal track. So I'm going to set up a delay, and a delay is just going to give us another not a copy, well yeah, another copy of her voice or many copies of her voice, and they'll all kind of interact with the other music. So let's add another effects channel here. I'm going to use my trusty uh, trusty delay here echo boy so we're going to put echo boy on there and we're going to rename this guy delay actually we might use more than one delay so I'm going to name this vocal delay 
and let's hear what it sounds like out of the gate. We have to send the vocal to it, obviously, so let me send this. So you can see that it's making um, making echoes of her voice in eighth notes. So it's in time with the song. So that's another reason it's important to record the song in time in the first place is so when we start to apply these effects, the timings and everything make sense and line up musically. So that's that's a lot way too much. So let's back that off. Uh, we can just tuck it down. So you can hear it mostly when I turn it off, and every once in a while, she'll sing a word that catches the delay, which is the way that an analog delay unit would work. That's a very musical thing. So some words catch the delay, and you hear a little tail, and it just... Mwah, mwah. I start spacing out, and I hear you good. I'm not sure about this, but I think we should. I'm going to turn it up louder just so we can hear it, so we can dial it in better, because it's not dialed right. Feedback. And it doesn't work in this part of the song anyway. We wouldn't have the same reverb there. Okay, you don't hear it much, but it's adding a dimension. It's giving the song some depth that wasn't there before, and it's making it sound bigger and subsequently more produced. much still I'm gonna back it off even more we wanted to do an effect kind of sound on where he says you good in this song so let's see what we can do there Right here, it starts 
Let's put a marker. So I know. And there's the end right there. Another marker. Let's set up another effect. You know what? Let's make a copy. Let's make a new track. Let's make a new track. And I want to add it here, though. Add it right there. <laughs> Put a track right there. We'll call it uh, mm, static. No, what do we call it? VFX one. I guess for now. And I'm going to take between these markers. Let's just cut that. We're going to leave her signal alone. And copy this. To its own track. And we'll mess with this track. So now let's hack this up. Now, let's grab some of these fun sound toys toys like Decapitator. <laughs> let's see what Decapitator does to it. I hear you go. Let's punish it. You go. It's just distortion. You go. I'm not sure about this. It's not what I'm looking to do. What I'm looking to do. Oh, let's get rid of this. I thought that might be a fast way to do it, but it's gonna. It's not gonna be where we want to go. So, let's get rid of that. Bye bye. Instead, let's mute hers. Or yeah, let's turn hers down a lot. Here, like that. All right. So she's gonna be more like an echo of herself and. We're going to throw an EQ on this and take away most of the frequencies so that it sounds like an old phone. Uh, filter. Pro Q. Boom. Now, let's filter out most of it and just leave the mid-range like they would on a phone. Like there. See what this sounds like. Just a sec. I'm also going to throw Echo Boy on that. See, I'm not using it in this instance like a send. I'm actually putting the effect on the track. And let's just poke through some of these presets here, because some of these might be fun. Vocal effects. I am Legion. Not quite. Uh, rhythmic. Kind of want it to sound like um, like a staticky old TV. That's what I'm going for. Uh, how do we get that sound? Intercom vocals would also work. That sounds. I start spacing out and I hear you. Uh, I'm not sure about this, but I think we should. Hmm. Spacing out and I hear you. Uh, I'm not sure about this. Out and I hear you. Uh, I'm not sure about this. Hear you. Uh, Let me just put a loop around this. And I hear you. Uh, I'm not sure. And I hear you. I'm gonna make that loop longer because that would get annoying really fast. Blend 
this a little better. Let's see if we can make her sound like a man. Let's see what we can do with Melodyne. It's only gonna be a couple of notes. This is way too big. Let's uh, can you zoom this out a little bit, homies. Let's maybe if I just pull this down, will it do that? No, of course not. No, why would it do that? You can just hide all the little dually things everywhere, so nobody knows where they are. Do I have to use the zoom tool? Are you gonna make me use the little magnifying glass thing, Melodyne? Is that what's gonna happen? You know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, there we go. That's what I'm going for. Zoom tool. Zoom, zoom, zoom. All right, here we go. Let's go back to my... Pen tool. Let's grab all these. And where do they start? They start at G. Looks like G flat. Let's bring them back. Let's bring them down an octave. G flat, right? A B C D E F G. A flat, use G sharp, there it is, G flat. Ah, we need them all, we need them all. And we're going to G flat, I think. Huh, I don't know if I hear a difference at all. a little so it doesn't come out of center let's duplicate it too come on let's pan one left and one right Last too long now because I've added that fade in back in. doesn't mean it's not going to get there. So, let's see what else we can do here. I want a throw. So let's add another vocal effects track. Add another effects track. Add me another effects track. Dun, 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 dun. There it is. Dun, 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 dun. Gonna give it a delay, and it's gonna be so cool. This one will be long, so we'll call it a throw. We'll make it 100% wet, and we want it to be like I don't know, a half note maybe, quarter note, quarter note maybe. Let's start with a quarter note, and then we're gonna send this. These guys which I'm going to send to a bus called effects. Let's make a bus for them. We'll call it effects, or we'll call it vocal effects. Uh, VFX. And we'll send that 
to the throw. Here we go. It's the mountain I hear. I'm not sure about this, but I start to be the mountain I hear. I'm not sure about this, but I kind of like that. Um, it doesn't fit really the vibe of what she's saying. I I just like the way it sounds a little bit, but uh, let's see if I can tweak it. Uh, where's our throw? Our throw is here. I want more feedback. Space them out and I hear you. I'm not sure about this, but I think we should. And I want that echo to sound also like a transmitter. Side space them out and I hear you. I'm not sure about this, but I think we should. Side space them out and I hear you. I'm not sure about this, but I think we should. Starts beasting out and I hear you. I'm not sure about this, but I think we should. Mm. The the uh, delay is louder than the actual sound. I hear you. Let me turn that delay down, the throw down. Out and I hear you. I'm not sure about this, but I think we should. I'm gonna throw this also to our reverb just to see if that helps any. I'm not loving it, but I'm just poking around trying to get where I want to go. Uh, so I want to give those a lot of herb. Let's be some out and I hear you. I'm not sure about this, but I think we should. Oh, yeah, and I hear you. I'm not sure about this. Let me try different types of delay here. Instead of just this one, let's try a double delay, a dual delay. One of them an eighth, one of them a quarter. That's too much. What if they're both a quarter? I start spacing out and I hear you. I'm not sure about this, but I think we should. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that's any different than having a single echo. That's a quarter note, just louder. Let's try ping pong so it goes back between the speakers. Let's try an eighth and a quarter with the ping pong. Nope, I don't like that at all. I think I just like the single delay best. So let's go back to just the one single echo. Yeah, and that was a quarter note, and there's quite a bit of feedback on it. Let's give it a little more. Sounds too electronic. I'm not trying to go electronic. I'm trying to go um, old or uh, faded or like not quite. Let's try verbed. Well, I kind of like that. Let's 
Let's try cheap tape. I don't know what Ben Sonnet is. Alright, which one did I just like? I liked the... Well, I like Transmitter, and I liked... Was it that? Or Verbed? It's kind of subtle, and I, I'll i just mess with the other... This one. And tone this off a bit. I need a sound effect, so I'm going to use this app called Soundly, and I want a static kind of TV sound that I will mix a little bit in here so it sounds like static. track. I'm going to make a new track for it. Call it SFX. Let's drag that up and see. Turn it down. It doesn't have to be loud. That was way too loud, but that's kind of the effect I want. I'm going to send this to the verb and the delay. And the throw. Let's see what. Uh, no, not the throw. That's a bad idea. To the verb and the delay. No, it's not loud enough. Turn it up. And I'm going to put an EQ on it, and I'm going to take off the, um, the low end. So let me grab my Pro Q. Bam. And let's roll off that bit there. full sounding this is getting better I'm being drastic with it but it's a sound effect right I'm not trying to retain anything natural sounding here it's static I think that's what I want I don't know I think I like that it's gonna, I'm going to have to listen to it a few times to see and also ask Francine if that's what she kind of had in mind because that's kind of what I was hearing. But I was hearing more like a like a, a party background, like, you know, in that Sublime song when he's like, turn off the radio, man. That's kind of the sound I was hearing. All right. So one of these is loud, I think. Maybe they're both a little bit loud. Let me turn these both down. I'm going to turn the original up a bit so you hear more of the unaffected voice. I don't know. What do you think? If anybody's listening, what do you think in the comments there about the static sound? I 
I don't love it. Maybe if I get her original voice out entirely there. I like that better, I think. I want more delay on it. I start spacing out and I hear you out on my s Ooh, you good sounds. Those are the over here, the effects. More throw. Out and I hear you out on my sore about this, but I think we should I heard a comment, so let me see what we got there. Boom, 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 running out of time for today. Uh, let's grab our comments. Francine thought more like a dreamy thing. Yeah, so did I. Uh, it's not really where this went. I'm not sure. It's, yeah, I don't... Starts pacing out and I hear you out I'm not sure about this But I think we should Maybe Maybe the effect is good We just don't want the static sound Maybe we can find a, a dreamier kind of Like a harp or something to throw in right there For a second uh, That's cheesy as fuck But we can, <laughs> we can see what it sounds like Uh <laughs> How's that? That'll do it, huh? Yeah, this is kind of the sound I was thinking. Just ambient sound, but it doesn't make sense for just a second in a song. That's the way to go. I'm going to throw some of that noise in there just to try. Let's see if we, it won't start right there. It'd have to fade in and out. Probably logarith logarithmically. Like so. I start spacing out and I hear No, this is not going in the right direction. Hmm. Let's get rid of the high end of all that and see what that sounds like. Kind of in a hole here on these two words, which I was a little bit afraid of. But here we are, so let's fix it. Is it this one? VFX, VFX. No, it's not this one. It is... This one. So let's throw an EQ on this, and let's get rid of all the high end of our echoes. You don't hear them at all anymore. I hear you good on my Now and I hear you good on my sore about this, but I 
it's peaceful now and I hear you good I'm not sure about this, but I think we should Writing something here It's peaceful now and I hear you good I'm not sure about this, but I That's less drastic and then let's see if we can just fit something a little bit dreamy behind it. Uh, uh, I did double your original vocal there. The thing is, when you do that, it just sounds like a louder version of the same thing. So if I, you know what, let's go with this for now and we can come back and fix it. It's pretty, it's not subtle, but it's it doesn't punch you in the face anymore. Anyway, I got rid of the static sound and let's just see if we can do something m more sweeping to uh, just be productive. And we'll come back to it. Turn that up. I'm going to increase my buffer size here too because we're not recording anymore. So, no need to be so low. And let's go. It's too new to know better. I'm too bold to care. Just hold me. Make the world disappear. something here the butterflies inside bit there needs to be a similar kind of effect maybe not the same effect but let's uh, you know what let's add here I'm gonna hit a for automation and then let's go here to add and remove automation and I want to have a send to the vocal delay here now, when I want to, I can I can send more or less of the signal to the delay. So I want to send more of this to the delay. Oh, that's noxious. Why didn't that happen for me? This is what I wanted it to do. Let's try this. to have it on the butterflies.
that. I like that. It's subtle and it adds a little bit of an airiness around the word butterflies without being kitschy, I think. Um, so. Say your mind. It feels like our first day never ended. Butterflies inside. Feelings extended. I love this high. It drives me wild. Just out of curiosity, let's pull up soundly. See if we can get a flutter sound. <laughs> of course we can. There it is. Let's grab it. See if we can turn it up a lot. This should go on the SFX track. And then it should go where the butterfly delay went here. And let's see if I can cr crank it. Sounds noisy. It feels like our first day never ended, butterflies inside. Feelings extended. I love this high. He drives me wild with all the things he can do. He's got me begging for more, and I'm just craving him. It's true. like where her voice kind of it doesn't strain it sounds awesome there's a little tiny vocal inflection here I want to turn up if I can uh, that's not even the right track here it is let's listen it's true. so good it's a very tiny thing but it's so good so let's make sure people hear that uh, why isn't this putting a point on here for me being difficult god damn it god damn you god damn it god damn Start here. When I'm all no, here. To here. When I'm all like when I'm all like it's drastic. Let me just fade it in a little so it's not so abrupt. Oh, that's so good. Baby this, baby that, playing with my booty cats, can't you see? Let me just make sure it's not too loud, because I get excited, I might go overboard. Oh, let's see this. 
Seen a little too because there's no reason not to. Let's bounce this. Let's grab that little zoomy tool. I don't really like the way you zoom in and out in Melodyne, it's kind of messes with me. Butterflies inside bit the um, the delay throw is good, but it didn't go long enough. I heard it stop, so let me just fix that. Uh, where is that? That's on. Oh, it's just automation on this track here. Nope, that's not it. It's uh, butterflies inside is this automation here. See this through a little bit. That's just volume automation, so we're gonna go to volume here and I'm just craving him, it's true. Oh, let's see this through. Still, there's still a lot of instruments to bring back into the mix. We got 10 minutes. Let's make sure this isn't too loud anywhere.
make the world disappear Ooh, make the world disappear And I'm alright, baby this, baby that Me with my booty cats, can't you see? You're the only one for me See, you're mine And I'm alright, baby this, baby that Got me like Okay, so now I, I like that, but Francine's not cutting through the mix yet. There's a lot going on, and she's not always the. She, she's not sounding glistening and sparkly enough yet. So we need to. Maybe let's just listen to the vocals and see if there's some room to just boost the high end. So let's just listen to the vocals. Like an acrobat in the bed, holding me up until the Do we have that API on here? We don't. Yeah, we gotta give her that uh, API compressor. Oh, let's see this through. Baby that playing with my booty cats Can't you see You're the only one for me Say you're mine And I'm all like baby this Baby that got me like an acrobat In the bed Holding me up until the end Say you're mine Say you're mine I'm gonna give her a little more of the delay. That's can't you see? You're the only one for me. Say you're mine. And I'm all like baby this, baby that. Got me like an acrobat in the bed. Holding me up until We're gonna put an EQ on the reverb. And say you're Get rid of some of the low end in there. So it doesn't conflict. It feels like our first date never ended, butterflies inside, feelings extended. Pegging this thing. I love this high. He tries me wild with all the things he can do. He's got me begging for more. Now I'm just craving him. It's true. Oh, let's see this through. And I'm all like. Oh, that's the harmony. I gotta turn some stuff down. This is getting too loud. So let's start with the bass real quick. Let's just level this out. Uh, the drums are good, I think. Starting with the bass. Drums. tool on this acoustic guitar? I did once. Let's do that mix tool. And invert that phase. Move some plants to the wind and get soaked. Honestly, I was stoked. I love me a summer storm. So I was like... Doesn't have to be so jacked. Bring it on, oh my god, that lightning crack seemed like it bounced right off 
my back Never have I ever felt so alive And now I'm all alive Baby this, baby that Playing with my pony cats Can't you see? Bring in those heavies real quick because it sounds empty without them. Heavies. This is not heavy. needs to come up. This part's quiet. much I like the ra the ramp up but it's just too much Where are the heavies at? Oh no, we got two minutes. Let's get the heavies in. Alright, we're going to listen to this song one more time, all the way through. Throwing the solo in there because it's bitching. And then we're going to see you next week. Stop.
it's peaceful now, then I hear you good. I'm not sure about this, but I think we should. Oh yeah, I think we should. It's too new to know better. I'm too bold to care. Just hold me, make the world disappear. Okay, we had some progress. I'll see you next week. Bye bye.